So this is interesting in uh, Mississippi. Graham and I played this tiny little rock club in Oxford, Mississippi, which is a college town where Ole Miss is. And I was really impressed by all the bands and artists that had played at this club. It's this, this small little rock club in Mississippi. Um, but the guy that runs it does a really good job at catching people at the right time. So uh, Wilco has played at this place. Uh, Jillian Welch has played at this place. The Hold Steady. Uh, I believe Jeff Buckley was up on that wall. Uh, Elvis Costello, which was crazy random. Elvis Costello played at this tiny rock club in Mississippi. Um, and the reason I bring this up... Also, quick side note from Music Monday before we continue. Side note from Music Monday. Uh, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone had a good one if that's your thing. I had a really good one because St. Patrick's Day is also uh, my fiance's birthday. So we had a really fun night. We did a lot of, uh, we went out with a, a big group of friends to a couple different spots. It was a very fun evening. I am, uh, I'm actually not hungover. I paced myself well. Um, I can't speak for her, but I am not hungover. And she turned uh, younger than me. That's uh, how old she is, uh, younger than me. And, um, so side note for St. Patrick's Day, if you want, uh, one of my favorite St. Patrick's Day songs, uh, David Rovix, a guy you've heard me talk about before, he's an anarchist folk artist out of Portland, Oregon, uh, David Rovix has a song called the St. Patrick's Battalion, and it's about Irish settlers, and it's, it's true, it's history, uh, Irish settlers that came over to the United States, and thought it was their duty to fight in the United States war against Mexico. And they went over there and they saw what the U.S. was doing. And they realized that uh, what the U.S. was doing to Mexico was not okay. And that they were on the wrong thing, wrong side of things. So they formed the St. Patrick's Battalion. And they fought for Mexico. And he tells the story via song. And it's a, it's a very powerful song. Uh, so again... Look up the song St. Patrick's Battalion by David Rovix. That's spelled R-O-V-I-C-S. You can find this song on YouTube um, and check it out. But getting back to my experience in Mississippi, I was impressed by all the bands on the walls, all the artists on the walls. I even took a couple pictures, posted it on the Insta because I, I get kind of excited when I, whenever I see, like, whenever we play rock clubs, um, you know, when you're a comedian, you don't usually get to play rock clubs right away because usually you're just playing at comedy clubs because you're an opening act. Um, and then once you start to, you know, kind of develop a little bit of a following on your own, then you can play other types of venues. So now, Graham Elwood and myself, we do the Progressive Comedy Tour. We're, um, you know, trying to reach listeners of the show and stuff like that. So we are more likely to play a rock club or something like that than a comedy club because we're not coming into comedy clubs for full weekends. We're usually hitting one market a night. So we do a lot of rock clubs. So it's exciting for me now to see, uh, to be playing venues where some of my favorite bands have also played. That's sort of a, that's sort of a neat little thing for me. Uh, so I was excited and I was taking some of the pictures. The reason I bring this up is because when we went to the green room, who was displayed in that green room? None other than Dick Dale. Uh, Dick Dale, for those of you who don't know, and, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll admit I'm not crazy familiar or fluent with Dick Dale. Uh, there's a lot of people that know a lot more about him than me. Um, but I do know that Dick Dale, I know the obvious, he is the surf rock guitarist. He was the surf rock guy. Uh, he passed away yesterday, or, well, two days ago. I think it was two days ago. Yeah, it was on the 16th, so it was two days ago. And Dick Dale was in that green room. Graham Elwood and I actually made a video about it, and I pointed out that Dick Dale was there. And uh, several days later, Dick Dale passed away. But here's something interesting about Dick Dale that uh, makes this a very interesting Music Monday topic. I have to perform to save my life. 
Medical bills kept rock legend Dick Dale touring till the end. Now, I'm learning a bunch of this stuff for the first time. So let's see what this is all about. It was the mid-1960s and Rapid Fire Sounds Dick Dale was pulling out his gold-painted Fender Stratocaster. Uh, was pulling out of his... Wait. It was the mid-60s and the Rapid Fire Sounds Dick Dale was pulling out of his gold-painted Fender Stratocaster had already reshaped popular music. In the space of a few short years, the Boston-born Southern California transplant had merged the laid-back, sun-blasted lifestyle of the surf scene with the blistering rhythm of rockabilly and early rock and roll, as the mad scientist behind what was dubbed Surf Rockdale was, in the words of 1963 Life magazine profile, a thumping teenage idol who was part evangelist, part Pied Piper, and all success. The music Dale and his band The Deltones made poured out of radio, soundtrack, popular beach movies. Uh, all right. So he was the king of the surf guitar. I once made a million dollars a year with my career. I made 10 grand for three minutes of work on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1963. This is Dick Dale's talking. But Dick Dale's time in the spotlight came to a sudden end in 1965. That year when he was only 28, he was diagnosed with rectal cancer. Admittedly, I did not know this. As the Time magazine... Uh, as the Times Magazine reported, doctors told the guitarist he could be dead in a matter of months. He survived, but the cancer bout whittled Dale from 158 to 98 pounds. Wow. And it drained his bank account. He moved to Hawaii, and he stayed away from music for a number of years. Dale passed away on Saturday night, his longtime drummer Dusty Watson confirmed. He was 81 years old. No cause of death has been released. Tributes have begun popping up online. Many are celebrating his distinctive sound. But the musician's life story was also a constant struggle against health problems and to pay medical bills. After his first cancer diagnosis in 1965, he continued to battle the disease. So he toured to fund his treatment. I can't stop touring because I will die. Physically and literally, I will die. This is Dick Dale talking. And he said this to the Pittsburgh City paper in 2015. I'd love to stay home and build ships in a bottle and spend time with my wife in Hawaii, but I have to perform. Wow. So after his near-death cancer experience in the mid-1960s, he reinvented himself as a club owner in Southern California. But bad business decisions and a divorce eventually pulled his lifestyle out from under him. He was evicted from his dream house in 1986. The next year when he recorded a version of Pipeline with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, wow. Check this out. So the next year, so this would have been 1987, he recorded a version of Pipeline with Stevie Ray Vaughan, Stevie Ray Vaughan and that earned a Grammy nomination. He was living in an RV parked in his parents' driveway. Dale's career got an unexpected boost in 94 when director Quentin Tarantino used Miserloo in the opening credits of Pulp Fiction. But health problems continue. 20 years after his first diagnosis, the rectal cancer returned, and the second bout left him without parts of his stomach and intestines, and he was outfitted with a colostomy bag. And he would not let it bring him down. This, uh... So this article cites, uh... A moment in Vegas when his colostomy bag began leaking. And I saw I saw stuff on Twitter that other people were reporting stories like that. Other people were reporting stuff like, yeah, I saw Dick Dale. His colostomy bag broke. He just washed himself off and continued with the show. He didn't give a shit. He's like, I'm going to wash. I'm going to wash this shit off. And I'm going to continue with the show. So I, I, I had no idea. I, I always just knew the very obvious about dick dale he was the surf rock guitar dude he's the king of surf rock that's what i knew about him that's what most people know about him and he's one of those guys you have a lot of respect for and reverence for but you know unless you really seek that stuff out you're just kind of like oh yeah uh i never saw dick dale live um and I, I didn't know any of this about him i didn't know about his health issues i didn't know about him living in an RV. I didn't know um, about any of this. 
And it's just amazing how chronic health issues can bankrupt even somebody as successful as him. In the richest country in the world, in the United States. This is why we need universal health care. We need a single payer, universal system. And this is why just beating around the bush with that or, or supporting something where some more people get health care, but not everybody, it's not enough. And it's a scam and it's a giveaway to the insurance industry and the insurance industry needs to go away. They cannot have a seat at the table. And any politician who says they can have a seat at the table is A, lying, and B, placating to the donors in the insurance industry and not the citizens. This isn't some purity test. This is affirming the necessary solution to the catastrophic problem that is our healthcare crisis. And again, there's nothing pragmatic about an incremental solution to a catastrophic problem. Hey, we're going to maybe get the public option. But no, we're going to have a Medicare for all single payer system. Pretty much every other industrialized nation in the world has this. And it works. And the ones that do actually have private insurance, like Switzerland, they pay the type of money we pay. They pay twice as much as everywhere else. And in Switzerland, there's a lot more oversight. That's why they don't rank as low as we do. They still rank lower than places like France and Italy. But they don't rank as low as us because they do have more oversight as to what these private insurance industry companies can get away with. So the solution is not keeping them at the table. They have to go away. Any politician that tells you otherwise is lying to you, is catering to the insurance companies and not the voters, and does not deserve your vote. And Dick Dale, rest in power, man. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news.